Years ago, there was a man named Vincent Van Gogh, and he liked to paint. He started painting when he was 27, after becoming ill and moving back in with his parents. And I mean, does anyone really want to be living with their parents when they're 30 years old? I guess there are probably some people, but what I'm saying is, who are those people? I have no desire to live with my parents at nearly 30 years of age, and my guess is Vincent Van Gogh did not want to live with his parents either, considering the fact that he produced 900 paintings over the course of the next nine years. So, Van Gogh started painting late in life for all intents and purposes, because most artists usually start when they're younger than 27 or so I've been told. But once he started, he worked like a horse. And for that, we commend him. Van Gogh, if you can hear me now saying this, some people say you're easy. They say you're basic. Well, I say maybe you actually are those things, but I don't care. All of a sudden things got a little sappy there. Excuse me, where was I? Uh, that's right. Van Gogh started painting late in life. Is 27 late in life? I don't know. That's what the internet says. If you're 27 or older and you want to start something new, I say shoot your shot because maybe goodwill will come your way. And I say that as a 24 year old. So. Although admittedly the internet also says that Van Gogh only sold one painting while he was alive, which is pretty depressing if you ask me. Hopefully if I ever produce 900 YouTube videos, things will turn out better for me. But my point is that this fact haunts me. Van Gogh sold one painting before he died, but interestingly enough, it isn't one of what many I don't know, what would you call them, art experts? It's really just a filler term. What many people would consider his greatest masterpieces. And this also haunts me. But it's fine. Everything is fine. We're talking about everyone's favorite red-bearded Dutch painter. I'm not gonna let the existential dread creep in and ruin my time. So Van Gogh sold this painting titled The Red Vineyard and it's believed to be the only one he sold during his lifetime. And while it's considered one of his major works, it isn't one of his most popular works. But I think the painting tells a cool story, so I'm going to try telling it to you as best I can. And if you'll forgive me for the self-promo before the video really gets started, if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button, say hello in the comments, uh, hit that subscribe button. We are a small channel, but we only need some fresh air, some sunlight, and some water to grow. Okay, now moving on. This is the story of the only painting Vincent van Gogh sold before he died. In a letter, Van Gogh wrote, quote, I have to go to work in the vineyard. It's all purplish, yellow green under the blue sky, a beautiful color motif, end quote. Interestingly enough, from what I found, the red vineyard wasn't painted in the vineyard. Maybe that fact surprises you, maybe it doesn't, my point is that Van Gogh created it from memory, and I think that's cool. And the reason I think it's cool is because, like I've said in the video I made titled The Trouble of Memory, link in description, our memory is malleable. So creating art from memory rather than doing it on scene, for lack of a better wording, is this strange amalgamation of reality and the artist's perception, and in my opinion, that somehow makes it more true. But now I want to talk about why I love this painting, and what it is about it that interests me so much. Van Gogh takes a lot of flack. People call his art too easy or too basic or whatever, I've already said these things. It's very boring, the, these criticisms, these critiques. Van Gogh is kind of like the Dostoevsky of painting, in my opinion. 
He's a big name that people discover early, and because people discover him early in life, that somehow means that his art is bad or whatever. I don't know. I don't say these things. It's other people who say these things. I am only trying to tell you what these other people, these crazies, say. For anyone who's at all interested in art, Van Gogh is oftentimes one of the names we hear about first. And I think that's because his artistic style is both accessible and fun. It's playful, it's interesting, it's profound and unique. And haters are going to hate if the haters so choose. I don't wanna to get too bogged down on this point. I just wanted to briefly address the Van Gogh haters. It's fine if you don't like him, it's fine that other people don't like him, but I don't know, I, I don't really care, honestly. Anyways, why do I love this painting? I love this painting because I don't know. Why does anyone love any art? There's a deep question. I'm kidding, obviously. I love this painting because it strikes me as deceptively complicated among plenty of other things. That's just what I'm gonna focus on right now. It's a depiction of pastoral life that captures both the beauty of the landscape and the labor that the landscape demands. The landscape, the red vineyard is beautifully rendered by Van Gogh's style. The sky is yellow, which makes me think the sun is at like zenith or something, meaning it looks uncomfortably hot. And for this reason, the painting is kind of deceptive. Van Gogh's style is easy on the eye. There's a childish comfort to it that I think contrasts the strenuous working conditions this particular piece is depicting. And this juxtaposition adds a layer of meaning, in my estimation. It captures something true about the Danish countryside's capacity for beauty and cruelty. Have I been to the Danish countryside? I have not. But I've been to countrysides. So my point is that there's a dichotomy here that is specific insofar as it is literally limited to the single image Van Gogh painted. But I don't think it's too difficult to scale this up in order to make some sort of universal claim about like the human condition. Beauty and cruelty, at least when we slow down and take a closer look, aren't as mutually exclusive as we might think, at least maybe at first. To some extent, it kind of depends on where and how we look, and I think that's a life lesson that can be learned in front of a painting or in front of a piece of art. Yes, but once we understand this valuable idea, I think it can follow us after we turn our eyes from the painting. It's the kind of thing that we can learn when we're observing a work of art, and then when we leave, we can take it with us. And the coexistence of beauty and cruelty is an idea that artists from all over the world have been trying to depict for literally thousands of years, probably longer. Honestly, I just didn't, I, I didn't check that fact, this particular fact for like a time span. Now, let's talk about pastoral life, if such a Phrasing can be used without sounding too cringe. Pastoral life isn't easy now, and it definitely wasn't any easier during Van Gogh's lifetime. Pastoral life isn't fun, it's a fantasy, it's an ideal. We like to think about the countryside and how beautiful it is, and that kind of prevents us from seeing how torturous it is. So let's pick the ideal apart. Let's take a closer look. What do we see here? We see people. We see peasants, farmers, laborers, workers, whatever word you want to use. We see people's bodies sticking up about as far back as the eye can see. And with this in mind, the painting becomes a tiny, tiny portion of the imaginable landscape. In my mind, I imagine hundreds of people laboring away in the vineyard all around the people we see in this particular painting. And maybe that means nothing to you. Maybe you're a cold shell of a person and you're thinking, dumb, lame. Hopefully you're not thinking that. Hopefully you're a warm person and not a shell. But anyways, 
I gotta cover my tracks. My point is that if we could somehow access a bird's eye view of the vineyard Van Gogh is depicting, if we could somehow gain access to the rest of the landscape, I mean, obviously I'm speaking hypothetically. What I think we would see though is a sea of workers stretching on for miles and miles and miles, or maybe not miles, but a very long, far distance. And we would see these workers working in the hot afternoon sun. And when we consider this, when we consider what a day of work might actually look like in terms of the sheer number of people that are working in the field that extends beyond the canvas that we see, what first appears to be a relatively simple and straightforward representation of pastoral living becomes significantly more complicated, or at least more interesting. And that is a profound idea, in my opinion. How something as mundane as working in a field can transform and become something that's more complicated. Because just by kind of scaling out the image, imagining what might be beyond the canvas, I think it kind of changes what we see. And I'll say a little bit more about that right now. Towing the line between simplicity and complexity is something great art does. It welcomes us in, it invites an observer or a reader or a listener, and it rewards us for our attention by showing us that maybe things aren't as simple as they appeared at first glance. And when I say simple, I don't mean it negatively. I mean, you know, simple art is so often just something that is inviting, whether it's comedy or a movie or a book or a painting. It invites us in, it asks us to give our attention to it, and when we do focus in on it and give our attention to it, what happens is that we're rewarded in some way. And what I think that reward looks like is this movement away from um, whatever is depicted as being simple and a movement toward complexity, toward understanding that maybe things aren't exactly as they seem. Maybe there's more to the image than we thought at first glance. And that's why I love this painting. It was the only painting Van Gogh sold while he was alive, and many people haven't even seen it or heard of it. And I think there's a paradox here. One that's a bit terrifying for hopeful creatives, and it's a little bit terrifying because Van Gogh is not remembered for the work he sold during his lifetime, but rather for the work he did not sell, but just produced. And I don't know where he was putting all these 900 paintings, but Van Gogh died without being recognized, which, I mean, it is bad, but I guess it isn't so bad. Really what's bad is that he died without making money from what he made. At least I think that's what's bad. Maybe you disagree. What appears at first glance to be simple is, upon further inspection, beautifully complicated. And I think that idea, understanding the relationship between simplicity and complexity, and being able to apply it to a visual form of art, is, for all intents and purposes, a life skill. So that's really what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to tell you why I like this painting, what about it interests me. And I'm hoping that by doing that, it kind of teaches you or shows you how to look at art differently. Because I think great art is unique in the fact that it can teach us to interact with the world differently in a way that is perhaps uh, more self-benefiting than were we to not pay attention to it at all. But okay, for now, that is everything that I've got. If you enjoyed this video, my friends and I ask that you please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let us know what you think in the comment section down below. We really like talking with all of you, and uh, yeah, we're also very lonely. Only not a lot of subscribers, so very lonely. Could always use some, some pumping in the comments. Before I go, I want to thank my best friends and video editors, Joe and Bach. Thank you guys so much for your help. I couldn't make these videos without you. I really, really appreciate it. And I also want to thank you, my wonderful viewer, for sticking with me to the end of this video. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the fact that you are willing to give some of your time to this channel. Thanks again, everyone. I hope that you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you.